Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. And today we have four great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, customer with anger issues demands a manager, argues about a photo order, and ends up paying more due to not getting a price break. The second story, CEO tries to expedite password resets by upgrading them to priority one, but the outsourced company responds with bureaucratic overkill. The third story, student brilliantly outsmarts an opinionated English teacher by memorizing and writing 400 lines of an epic poem for extra credit, achieving a final score of 145%. Today's first story is, customer with anger issues. A couple days back we had a customer, I'll call her AL for angry lady, she was the type of customer who I knew would be an issue. She gave off the aura of confrontation the moment she walked into the store. She came in fairly late and ordered 650 photo prints. This isn't abnormal for our store, as we run plenty of weddings and events, and I assured her I could have it done before it closed because she lived in some distant city and didn't want to make the return trip at a later day. As I start printing and editing the photos, I noticed that the images were very poor quality. The customer had made several orders, and many of the orders were duplicates of all these blurry and out-of-focus photos. It literally looked like someone plugged their phone into our system and dumped every photo they'd ever taken, and just clicked print all, several times. Being the good customer service rep I am, I called the customer and she was still around, so she came in and confirmed that this was what she wanted. Print everything. All 650. I told her I could skip the blurry ones, but she said no, print them all. Okay, fine, I'll do that for you. Anyway, I finish the order and pack it up and send the email notification to let her know the order is complete. A couple minutes later, she walks into the store, walks over to the counter. I place the box of prints in front of her. Me, here's your order. Is there anything else you want? Without skipping a beat, she interrupted and said, AL, can I speak to a manager? I hesitate for a moment and ask her what's wrong. She asked to speak to a manager again. Me, I am the manager. What can I? AL, I did not order this many prints. At this point, she's got a bit of a psychotic glint in her eyes, and the way she's smiling makes my heart stop. I just know this is about to explode. Me. Ma'am, I had you come in to verify. AL. This is too many prints. I did not order all these. My dad is paying for these with his pension, which is a pittance compared to what you make. I wanted this order on a DVD, not printed. Me. Ma'am, I work retail. I don't earn. AL. I want to speak to the owner. Me. He's busy. AL. I want to speak to the owner now. I am not paying for all these prints I didn't order. Me, ma'am, he doesn't have time to waste arguing with you over what you ordered. At this point, I'm just done with her cutting me off and arguing and she's causing a scene. Other customers are watching with bated breath to see how this plays out. One customer at the kiosk computer shakes his head in pity for me. My coworker is fuming and barely able to hold himself back. The lady picks up her box of photos and starts walking towards the door. I thought she was just going to walk out with the prints and steal them, but her father walked up and took her back to the counter. I just want her out the door at this point and she keeps making a fuss about how poor her father is in front of him. He's clearly embarrassed and offering to pay. Me. Look, I'll only charge you for 450 prints. Sound good? AL. Fine. She throws her credit card at me, pays and walks out with a smug smirk on her face. Her father stays behind a few moments to apologize, then quickly hurries after her. I know what you're thinking right now. Ugh, another one of those retail managers who will bend over backwards for an angry customer. Obviously, my coworker was thinking the same thing, because he asked me why I let her pay for less prints, after we'd clearly confirmed with her several times that this was what she wanted. Me, remember the price break? He looks confused for a moment. We have a price break at 500 prints that halves the cost per print. Usually, we'll give it to anyone over 300 prints, because that's a huge number to be doing at once. But as stated on our website, the official break is 500. I did not give her the price break because the cost per print was significantly higher. The lady paid more for her prints than if she had have paid for the entire order and gotten the price break. My coworker and I had a laugh about it then close up shop. After that week, when an any problem customer comes in, we would say, well, at least they weren't as bad as angry lady. This story, as if from a comedy movie, shows that a variety of situations can occur when working with customers. The wicked lady exceeded all expectations and created a bright event for the entire store team. What impressed me was the tolerance and professionalism of the manager, who tried to resolve the conflict despite the aggressive behavior of the client. He even took into account the financial capabilities of the client's father and offered an adequate option, putting aside his professional merits. 
The story also shows the importance of understanding the company's rules and promotions. As in the case of the discount for 500 photo prints, even in the most unusual situations, you should remain professional and protect the interests of your business. Unfortunately, sometimes you have to face unpleasant situations when working with clients. But the story ends with a smile when colleagues joke about the evil lady. She has certainly become a legend in the store and an example of how important it is to maintain humor and professionalism in your work. The next story is CEO Malicious Compliance Players Me, me, CEO, our CEO, India, the outsourced company based in India. The story I'm an expert tech working as consultant usually for large companies. During this time I was working for a very large supermarket chain in Europe. They have 110 plus stores in over three countries. At that time, I was working as an expert tech helping out with the more difficult tickets the normal help desk could not close due to the lack of knowledge or other problems. In this time, outsourcing was also new and a hot item. Every company, both Europe and US based, were outsourcing easy work to India mainly. This supermarket was not any different. We also chose an outsourcing company in India and started routing the mundane stuff there. Think password resets. Before this became portals, virtual desk resizing, and other really, really easy stuff. After we got off to a good start, we started noticing the easy tasks were closing and also fixed and executed, only on the last possible moment. So a ticket example like this, user forgets password and submits a request. Prio 3 call, five workdays max, four days and four work hours later, password is reset and user can log in again. For the non-techies, a ticket can have four priorities. One, SH is on fire, need fixing ASAP. Two, ticket is important. One business day is sufficient time. 3. Not really important. One week will do. 4. No time listed. Do it when you have time. Now you have to understand, the Prio 1 tickets should be very little and far between. If important stuff breaks, you have a big problem. So important processes, documentation, and contractual obligations exist to make sure one does not go bankrupt, both our company and India, on Prio 1 tickets. So after the help desk noticed, they asked my team, and thus me, to find out what the hell's going on here. Me. Ring India. India. How may we help you today? Me. The password resets are slow. Can you guys please fix them faster because workers are waiting on them? India. Sure it can be faster. Give them a higher prio and pay the fee with the prio. Me. Aw. CEO. So it came to my attention and I'll pick this up from here as it's financially a big issue. CEO India. So can you guys please solve the tickets as prior 01? But we will pay for them prior 02. India. No can do. If you want higher prio, you'll pay more. Q Malicious Compliance CEO India, we want to upgrade our password reset to Prio 1 ticket with associated costs and obligations. India, that'll be fine, sir. We will do password resets now from Prio 1 importance. User, I forgot my password, please solve it. India, reset password, inform user, close ticket. CEO, no, 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 no. Please give me an incident report. How could this happen? How can we prevent this happening again? We also have this three-page template to fill out as per contractual obligations and have a meeting with your CEO to streamline this process. India spends a week typing up reports. User, I forgot my password. Please solve it. India, reset password, inform user, copy previous report with different username, close ticket. CEO, this looks copied from the previous report. No good. You'll have to redo it all in different wording. Plus, this is really important that we solve this and it must not happen again. This is the second Prio 1 in short time. Three weeks later, India, you will pay for Prio 2 and we will solve Prio 1. CEO, thanks guys. Edit. Yeah, priority levels are a little too one dimensional. While I know a lot of tickets have an estimated time to complete the task, or similar, it'd be nice if there was a drop down list of similar simplicity to the priority list. Something like 1, trivial fix, 2, fairly easy, 3, not too hard, 4, difficult but path is understood. 5. Have no idea how we'll fix this. Now of course this wouldn't be foolproof, but if there were a way to combine the priority with the simplicity, I think that could really streamline things. The OP illustrates how even the simplest tasks can turn into complex ones due to a poor approach to handling requests and technical support. An Indian contractor company started trying to squeeze more money out of its customer by forcing them to pay more for priority service. The CEO tried to use the tactic of evil consent by changing the priorities to priority 1 but choosing to pay at the priority 2 level. However, the Indian company's response was hilarious. They began to follow formal mandatory procedures that required a detailed report, and followed this up by keeping the story exactly the same for every customer. 
This story shows the importance of effective communication and understanding of processes when interacting with contractors, and that simple tasks can become extremely complex if common sense and commonly agreed standards are not followed. The third story is, teacher lost it. So I thought I would share it with all of you. In high school, I had an AP English teacher who was very opinionated in her grading. If she loved a book the class had to read and you didn't, you didn't get a good grade on your report when you turned it in. I was an avid reader. In fact, I cleaned out my school library in third grade. So let's just say I wasn't a fan of her literally selection. She was also the kind of teacher that thought her class was the most important one you had. Due to this, the workload was quite substantial. Coming up on our final exam, she gave the class a talk one week before the final. She would be weighing our grade for the semester, giving 60% of it to the final. She explained she was preparing us for college. However, since she was giving so much weight to the final, she would give us an opportunity to earn extra credit. For every four lines of the epic poem, the rhyme of the ancient mariner, you could memorize and write verbatim on the back of the test you would receive one extra point of credit. Goody goody hands time. I had a rough year due to her grading style so I was getting a B in the class at the time. However, this was my moment to shine. I have a knack for remembering things. In fact, as a freshman, I learned all the lines for the lead role of Neil Simon's Rumors two hours before opening night, due to the lead dropping out. I then performed the role for three nights without dropping a line. So this opportunity seemed made for me and I wasn't going to let it pass by. I got home and looked up the poem. It was well over 400 lines. I got to work. The final exam finally came. I sat down confidently in my seat and eagerly waited to receive my test. We received our 15-page final and were told we had 3.5 hours to complete it. I put my name at the top and immediately flipped it over to the back. For the next eight minutes, I ravenously wrote out 400 straight lines from the epic poem verbatim. That step complete, I decided to look at the questions she intended for us to answer. It was filled with multiple choice, essays, and fill-in-the-blank questions. I took a few minutes to fill in the blanks I knew guessed at the multiple choice ones I didn't know, and completely ignored her biased essays. Now for the fun part. After a grueling 15 minutes total into the 3.5 hour final, I walked triumphantly to the teacher's desk. I flipped the test on her desk and said, have a great summer. She said, very funny, it's a 3.5 hour final, sit down and finish your test. I responded, no, I'm finished, I got over 100%. She said, let me see your paper. She looks through my test. She saw the empty essays and empty fill in the blanks. Now even more annoyed with me, she said, you haven't answered half of these. It's a 3.5 hour final. Sit down and finish your test. I wouldn't be denied. I said, no, I'm finished. I got over 100%. At this point, she's getting very upset and the color in her face is starting to shift. How do you think you have over 100% when you haven't done half the test? She demanded. With a big smile, I said, look at the back. You said for every four lines of the rhyme of the ancient mariner, we memorized and wrote on the back, we would get one point of extra credit. You'll notice I've written 400 lines from the poem. By my math, that equals 100% of extra credit. Anything I answered in this nonsense is gravy, so I got over 100%. She turned beet red, her knuckles were white holding my paper, and she stared at me with hate in her eyes. I said, have a great summer, as I walked out feeling like I had just dropped Mike Tyson with a single blow. I got an A in the class. My final was 145% out of 100. Edit. It's easier to ace a test when you know the exact question you need to answer. I also wouldn't be docked for spelling, grammar, or opinions if I knew the exact words to write down. It's the difference between a sure thing and a gamble. I was always told that line. You only get out of class what you put into it. However, that's only half the equation. It also matters how much the teacher puts into the class. I was prepared for war if she had tried. This is a great example of how determination and intelligence can win out even in the most difficult of situations. The student decided to use his own intelligence and memory to get ahead of his teacher, who didn't seem to be very fair in her grades. You should always remain determined and stubborn in achieving your goals, even when the situation seems difficult or even unfair. Hit the like button to support the channel and subscribe. Have a good day.